It may be an understatement to say that for most scientists and philosophers, the most distinctive difference between humans and other species is our capacity to learn. So for a human like you, interested in learning and having such a great capacity for learning, I want to share with you a method for making your learning not only more memorable, but one that speaks deeply to aspects of your human nature. That method is story and location. In contrast to humans, most of the knowledge possessed by animals is passed on by their genes. But humans are primed to be imprinted by the world and those around us, relying instead on information gleaned from the environment and, most of all, shared by others. Since oral cultures lacked a systematic writing system to pass on knowledge and engaged in behaviors too complex for any individual to discover on their own, knowledge was obviously passed on orally. Imagine two hunter-gatherer children. The ancestors of these children have gathered a plethora of information on animals, plants, seasonal patterns, engineering practices, survival skills like navigation, first aid, and so on. One child is taught through stories of gods, anthropomorphized animals, people with magical abilities, along with very regular people too, having to solve problems in plausible situations. These stories are often associated with real places in the environment, like a mountain or an odd rock formation. While many of these stories are fantastical, they nevertheless contain accurate geographical, faunal, botanical, and psychological information. The other child is told factual information, and he repeats it over and over until he remembers it, which we call rote memorization. Which child remembers better? The one who learns by solidifying neural connections in the brain through repetition alone, or the one who's able to take advantage of the benefits of stories, which are as follows. One, it's easier to remember a sequence of events as opposed to unconnected events or facts. Two, events that invoke an emotional response or have an abnormality factor are remembered better than unemotional or ordinary events or information. Three, whose imagination is invoked to simulate a situation in a way that can approximate reality, and four, who uses the landscape, whether real or imaginary, to hook information to, to better allow their memory to be stimulated to retrieve the information. The evidence is clear. Those who place stories and locations, whether those locations are real or imaginary, remember things far better especially when the stories contain images or scenarios that are out of the ordinary. Even after writing was invented, literate people still use this method before the widespread availability of books that we have today. Because it works so well, this is the main method used today by memory athletes to memorize thousands of digits of pi or the order of a deck of cards in 30 seconds or less, among other things. Our ancestors likely figured this out too, and they had a lot of incentive memory was almost all they had. But why would we think our ancestors did this? One reason is that it's seen among recent hunter-gatherer people, along with some indigenous populations who have kept these traditions alive. The most impressive case is that of Australian Aborigines, who have amassed the largest story structure on Earth, crisscrossing the entire continent of Australia. This structure has been termed songlines. And so, here we can see a map of Australia. The lines you see are routes along which stories are told. These are song lines. At various points along these routes, a knowledge holder will stop and recite a story associated with that place. This allows knowledge holders to amass incredible stores of knowledge. The same method can be found in other places around the world, like Native American trails. In the case of stories told by Australian Aborigines, it's been argued that some of them could be tens of thousands of years old. Some researchers have been exploring methods of dating stories that treat them similar to genetic analysis. These analyses have also put the origins of some world myths as possibly being tens of thousands of years old, specifically those dealing with constellations. It's likely that our ancestors would have had use for stories about stars for things like predicting the changes of seasons or for navigation. 
None of this is to say that rote learning was not part of our ancestors' memory practices, but it's clear that stories would have been an integral part of how they remembered the plethora of ecological and social knowledge used to survive in the time before writing. That said, there's still something that we can learn about better rote memorization. When rote memorization is observed in indigenous people, it's often made easier to remember by singing the information. We've all used this when learning our ABCs in school. Research also shows that music is another kind of memory hook that we can attach information to. It's probably likely that our distant ancestors used this method as well. And if indigenous people today are any indication, music would have been combined with dance. Dance can be useful in storing knowledge that isn't described as well by words, like the movement behaviors of animals. Stories do have one weakness, however. Compared to rote memorization, there's a greater amount of upfront effort needed to make them, especially when taking the time to integrate them with locations. This is the reason why many people who try the story method might not stick with it. So that's why I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to do it. So it's my goal with this channel in some way to transfer this ancient and proven method for better memory to the realm of video. It's my hope that you'll find this more interesting. If you'd like to see my first attempt, check out my three-part series on stoicism in the link. Until next time.